So welcome back to the physics of music. And last time we talked about time and we talked about how events happen in a particular order and we can assign quantitatively times to these events. And we also talked about the idea of periodic phenomena, events that repeat over and over again with a particular amount of time between the repetitions that we called the period. And we said that those kinds of periodic events are very important in music in various ways. And so, for example, uh, we, we talked about this periodic event. Okay, so that was basically just deciding to have one event, one drumstick hitting the rim of the snare drum, and then there was a, and that repeated periodically, and then there was a separate set of events, those three hits of the main part of the drum, and then we just had those three events repeat periodically, and then we had them have those periodic patterns happening at the same time, and it started to sound, uh, started to sound fairly musical. So the point of this lecture is going to be to just understand ways that we can represent these various events either events that aren't periodic or periodic events, various ways that we can represent these visually so we can talk about them easier and understand them easier. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna give you first a visual representation of that particular drum pattern that I was just playing. So let me share a picture with you. So a very simple way of representing events and when they occur that allows us to visualize which things happen before or after and which things might be periodic is using a timeline. And so that's just a visual representation where time is converted to a horizontal direction in the picture. And so things that happen later are to the right, things that happen earlier are to the left. And the amount of distance between the events on the timeline uh, is indicative of the amount of time between those events. And so you can see that this was this is a representation of uh, what I was playing on the drum. The rim sounds from the drum happened exactly periodically and so we see that that means in the timeline, there's an equal amount of spacing between each of those. Now, hitting the main part of the drum, it wasn't exactly periodic. Um, if in terms of the individual hits, you see that there was a little bit less time between these two, a little bit more time between these two. But if we look, look at groups of three of those events and the space between them, then you see that that pattern of three repeats and repeats again, repeats again, and so forth. And so this timeline is a very useful way to visualize these different things that are happening. In terms of our specific quantitative measures for periodic events, then we can say that the, we could talk about if we had some, some specific time markings on this timeline. So we could mark off the time in seconds. And then you would just look at the distance between two repeating events, and that would be the period. Okay. And similarly, if you wanted to know the period for the, for the hitting the main part of this muted snare drum, that would be the distance between this and this, which is the amount of time before the whole thing repeats again. So there's another way of representing time events visually that's very familiar to us, and that's the notion of a time graph. And so the time graph can be even more precise than, say, this timeline. A time graph is a visual representation of some particular property of something. Uh, so for example, with my drum playing, it could be the sound intensity as registered by the microphone. We'll talk later exactly what sound intensity means, but you can think about just the loudness of the, of the sound uh, that's coming out of the drum. And so 
Whereas in the time graph, we just see these dots as the sort of indicating when the rim sounds happened. Here in the, in the time graph, it's a little bit more precise. So we can see that when I hit the rim of the snare, the loudness or the sound intensity increases. And then it's not just an event that happens at an instant in time. Then there's a little bit of time after that where the sound decays, where it gets quieter, and then there's no sound for a while, and then the, the next hit happens, and then that gets quieter in a particular way, and so you see that that repeats. Um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not exactly periodic because I'm not perfect at hitting the rim of the snare drum, and so maybe some of them are slightly louder and some of them are slightly quieter. Just to point out that you know these time graphs, you see them every single day in, in the newspaper or on the news. For example, these days, this is our, this is our uh, most commonly presented time graph. So it could have to do with music or it could have to do with something else like COVID cases. Okay. So there's something that I wanted to point out about the way that we talk about time in a musical concept, in a musical context that differs a little bit from how we talk about it in real life. So in real life, we tend to just use seconds and minutes and hours. That's not always particularly convenient in the context of music. And the reason can be seen by looking at this graph. So what you notice here, I've plotted the time in seconds. What you notice is that the drum hits don't really line up very well with the time in seconds. And so if we wanted to say, well, when, when is this snare drum hit? Well, maybe it's at 0 0.74368 seconds. And this one is at 1.48 blah, blah, blah seconds. And so it's uh, a little bit, uh, it's a little bit unwieldy if we wanted to kind of keep track of the specific times for all those musical events. And so instead, what we often do in music is just to define an alternative way of measuring time. You can think of it as just like a, a different system of time units that would be useful in the context of a piece of music. And this is the notion of a beat. Okay. And so Beats are just like another system of time. It's, it's kind of like when you convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit in temperature. Um, in, in terms of time, we can convert between seconds and beats, except the amount of time for a beat is something that we're allowed to choose. And so in the context of a particular piece of music, then we often say, um, well, th in this music, um, there, there's a certain amount of seconds between each, uh, say, snare drum hit, and we're just going to define that amount of time to be one beat. And so you see then if we do that, the beats line up very precisely with the snare drum hits because we just chose them to. Okay, and so this is often the case in especially, well, particularly rhythmic music where we define these beats those are kind of imaginary events that happen periodically with a certain period. And sometimes, you know, when we're playing that music, we often tap our foot at the same period as the beats are happening. But we don't have to, and there doesn't actually have to be any sound at these beats. It's just, you could just think of it as an, an imaginary clock ticking throughout the song. Uh, but the nice thing about the beats then is that these musical events in a particular song usually line up with the beats or at specific fractions of the beats, like halfway between beat one and beat two, or three quarters of the way between beat three and beat four. Okay. And so in terms of, you know, what, sh what do we choose for the beats? And, you know, how do we, if we have a piece of music, how do I know uh, what these beats are? And so it's just kind of a choice and we choose the beats so that uh, when we do that, that the music contains events that repeat with a period of one beat or two beats or three beats or four beats. Very often what you find is that once you've chosen the beat, then there are certain patterns that happen maybe 
almost every beat. Like the, there is a musical note almost every beat. But then there are other patterns that happen in longer periods. And it's very common to have one particular uh, number of beats where you have periodic patterns with that number, like four beats. Uh, you might have something, you might have um, some notes every beat, but then something like a, a bass drum hit or, or a, an emphasized note would happen roughly every four beats. And so it's very common in the context of music to define something else, which is known as a measure or a bar. Um, and, and so that's kind of like the going from seconds to minutes. Um, we, we have a certain number of beats, but then we can say that there are four beats per measure. And, uh, and then in terms of the structure of the music, then um, things, certain things repeat, say every beat, other things might repeat every measure. Uh, and some other things might repeat every, in, when a period that's longer, some number of measures. Okay. And so I want you to, as an example of this, um, think about this particular piece of music. Okay, so before we, before we ask this question, let me just talk about this musical notation. So I've talked about two ways of representing events in time. One of them is a timeline. The other one is a time graph. Uh, in music, the way that we usually represent events would be this musical notation. And so if you're, if you're not familiar with it, um, it's almost like a timeline, um, but instead of having things drawn at precise locations, we just use these, these, the shapes or the, yeah, the particular appearance of these musical notes to indicate how many beats they last. And so these ones that are filled in indicates that you should play this one and then after one beat you play the next one and then after the next one you play uh, one more. This one that's not filled in uh, is, is indicating that you should play that one and hold it for two beats before playing the next one. Okay, so I'm not going to summarize all of musical notation. You should watch uh, a brief video on, on YouTube, for example, if you, want, um, if you want to understand this better. I'll give a link below if you, if you want to watch a five minute video about this. It's not going to be very important in this course, um, but just, just so you know how, how this is kind of a third way of representing events in time and therefore representing um, what you should do when you're playing a piece of music. Okay, so what I wanted to leave you with then is just uh, looking at this particular piece of music and seeing if you could identify anything that's periodic or a repeating pattern in not just in either the rhythm of the music or in the actual notes of the music or the shape of the melody of the music. And if you want to go listen to this, this is, well, what I've shown here is a very simplified version of one of the most famous pieces of music. Uh, this is Beethoven, part of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. This is sometimes called the Ode to Joy, this particular theme. Uh, so go and have a listen to that. And then in the next video, I'll talk a little bit about the repeating patterns that are here in this piece of music.